So hi guys, welcome back uh, to the Cessna 172 flight simulator here at SJ Sim Flights. Uh, so a few of you, uh, I've been getting a couple messages uh, via Facebook and YouTube uh, just asking for a video uh, on how uh, to or how I uh, configured uh, these three screens uh, on the simulator. So as you can see, uh, looking from the back, you may have seen uh, in the uh, simulator tour video, uh, I have two 32 inch uh, LED monitors on the uh, two side panels uh, and then at the top here, as you probably already guessed, uh, I have a Optima 500 uh, projector uh, and that projects about a 300 inch um, screen at the moment. It's slightly tilted back as you can see, uh, that was just specifically because of where it was placed um, so we had to get obviously the right angle and right view to try and make it as big as possible uh, to fill up. Uh, so that inside the cabin uh, it's a little bit more uh, immersive. Uh, so to start off with, uh, in terms of what you need uh, to get this um, configuration, um, you are going to need to put a little bit of investment in. Um, I used uh, all of the products that you see here uh, from Amazon, from different uh, and various companies. Uh, the Optima 500 I bought from Amazon, uh, the two LED TVs I bought from Amazon, uh, and also the splitter, uh, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, was from Amazon as well. Um, so the 32 inch TVs, uh, they are RCA um, HD TVs and um, just like any regular TV, they just have the, uh, the power socket on the back uh, and then also the just the HDMI cable, which will run down to the splitter. As I said, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, and these cost about 120 pounds, obviously, Depending on what brand and type you get, um, they can vary from different ranges between 100 and 200 pounds um, within that price range at least. Um, these ones are perfectly fine, HD, they're very clear. Uh, for 120 pounds, um, I think they, they do the job uh, pretty well. So, um, when I was talking about the splitter, so the HDMI cables, that's what I run them on. I don't run them on VGA because VGA is starting to go out of date now. Uh, HDMI gives a clearer image for sure. Um, so the HDMI cable I run from here, this one is a power bear. Um, I don't know if they're available at the moment on Amazon. Last time I checked they weren't. So this one literally runs all the way down to the splitter there. Uh, so does this HDMI cable here. That runs to the splitter and like I showed you on the other side, uh, that runs to this splitter as well. So this splitter here, uh, this is a StarTech. So all three HDMI cables run into there. Uh, the power bear for the, um, the main projector screen, the left hand screen and the right hand screen go into that as well. So this is a StarTech uh, HDMI splitter. That then goes into that one display port there. And depending on what PC you've got, make sure you double check beforehand uh, that your graphics card already has a display port with it. So if you can see here, uh, let me move that out of the way, you've got the HDMI there. So that's if you just want to run one display monitor, which is fine. Uh, but obviously if you want to run three for this purpose, you're going to need uh, the display port there uh, to plug in. So yeah, so that StarTech cost around about £130. It is a big investment, but they are built very well. This is made out of metal, uh, you know, it feels solid, feels very rugged. Um, so I was very impressed. Uh, plugged it all in, straightforward. Uh, came out of all three displays. Uh, and I'll show you the next bit that we've got to do now. So now we're inside the, uh, the cockpit. Uh, some of you may or may not have seen inside of here yet. I don't think I've done a video actually inside just yet. Uh, but here we have the uh, right uh, LED display, then the projector in front, and then the right hand one, uh, the left hand one, sorry, uh, as well there. So uh, I'm going to be using the left hand one uh, simply because uh, with X-Plane, um, you want to make this left hand screen your main monitor. Now I will show you how you can do that. So what you go to is that most PCs, I'm um, guessing that most of you who want to do this already have Windows 10. So I'm going to show you from a Windows 10 point of view. So what you do, you go into the search display bar down here. Uh, I don't, I can't get a full screen of this obviously because uh, the interior cuts off some of the uh, screen. Uh, so apologies if you can't see some of these things, but I'm going to try uh, and drag it into the middle if I can. Uh, so what you do, you go into the search, you press or you type in 
display and then you go to display settings so already I have uh, these three set up um, so what you're going to be doing is that what will come up normally is that it will say one there two and then three because the PC doesn't know really how you want them actually set but what you want to do is that you can basically drag these either side so if I wanted one there and three there and two there um, then you can drag these any way around you want but the configuration you're going to want obviously one being the uh, main projector screen three being the uh, left hand screen and two being the uh, right hand screen you're going to want number three as your main display so because I've just muddled these around it thinks that um, I want to reset them which I don't so I'm just going to cancel that so what, once you've got those three uh, aligned you can see that wherever I move this mouse cursor you can see it will then pop up on there and then if I drag it even more it will then pop up on this one so it creates it into one big display essentially um, but when we get into X-Plane we're going to show you how to uh, separate these so that they're three individual displays uh, with the resolution, just make sure uh, that your re resolution is uh, on recommended for all three of these um, because uh, X-Plane isn't going to want to run it on anything that isn't the recommended uh, screen anyway. Um, in terms of then how you choose uh, if you want number three as your main display, you will go down to, uh, if I can get this right, you go into this little box here and you make make this my main display which I've already got set on there but normally when you go onto there for the first time it won't have that tick in it this will come up in a more blacker font um, and you tick it and that's it and it'll say do you want to save these options you, yes obviously you do so once you've done that we're then going to open up Xplane now and I'll show you the next steps for that okay so we're now in uh, Xplane 11 obviously like most of you uh, I'm sure you've seen this screen many times before. If you're new to it, this is what the first screen will look like. Uh, so you've got all your different aircraft options, all your locations, weather, etc. I'm not going to go through that on this video though. So what will happen is that this screen here will be the only one that pops up. Because you've got this as your main display, the other two displays, don't worry if they turn off. It's simply because uh, they haven't been given the input yet to actually start up. There's no need for them to be on. Because this is just because the flight configuration screen works as just one screen, uh, it doesn't need the other two screens to be on. So until you actually start the flight, don't worry if these two screens don't come on in the first place. But what you are going to do, if you can see just up here, you're going to go to your settings menu where you've got those little uh, dials up there. You're then going to click on to graphics, which we're already on. And what you're going to be doing is you scroll down to the bottom here. And once, as you saw in uh, the last part, um, the way that we've set up all of our three monitors, so that's monitor three there, monitor one, and if we scroll across, we have monitor two there as well. So we've got them set up as we did on Windows 10 beforehand. Now in terms of setting up degrees, um, I did look on a website where you could find uh, pre-planned degrees. Uh, but it didn't seem to work on my simulator so you've got all these settings in here now if I wanted let's say the lateral offset uh, to be I don't know 10 degrees it may be slightly off center than where you want it on the wing um, it may not depending on what type of aircraft you're flying and how you've got or what type of screens you've got set up um, but the lateral offset is basically how much you're looking in either direction. Now I've also got that set on zero degrees because I want to be looking 90 degrees to the left. However, if I move to the left hand one, I've got it set on 180 degrees because I want to be looking 90 degrees directly to the right. So this works on essentially a 180 degree view. We've got zero degrees there, 90 degrees there, and 180 degrees there. OK, um, so in the middle now, I, I should obviously have this on 90. Uh, I've got it on 97. That's simply just because of how my uh, projector is configured to this. Um, but in terms of how you get each to 
how you get the degrees um, to look exactly zero degrees, 90 degrees and 180 degrees. You're gonna, my recommendation would be type zero in this top one here, then in the middle one, you're going to type in 90 first. If that doesn't work, you can type in any number you like. Um, you'll see what happens uh, when the screens load. Um, but just have a play around with it is the main thing. And then for the right, you're also going to put in 180 degrees. If you can just about see that. In terms of vertical and roll, roll, I would leave all of them on zero degrees because you're not going to want an angle on any of these. You just want them vertically straight. Uh, I mean, uh, exactly horizontally straight, sorry. Um, but for the vertical, that is how much you want to look up or down. Now on either side of these screens, for the left and right hand screen, I've still got them set as minus five degrees because I want to look slightly down uh, because otherwise if I'm looking up, I'm just pretty much going to be looking at the wing um, and I won't be able to see much of the uh, scenery on the ground. So I've got this set as both uh, minus five degrees. Again, it may be slightly different uh, for anyone else's PCs or monitors. Uh, and then for the middle, I've got it set up as plus 15 degrees uh, because I want it to look slightly upwards because if you set this on zero degrees, it has this weird thing again where it will just face plant you straight into the ground. So I've got that set on 15 degrees. But with any of these, uh, all I would recommend is to um, have a play around with the numbers. You'll see what happens once you start to get more familiar with them. Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, is in the next part, you'll now see um, how I've got them set up. Uh, and I'll take you on a small flight. Okay, so welcome back. Now, as you can see, uh, you might be wondering why on earth have I got the tail there, the right hand wing there, and the propeller there. So, if your sim does do this, um, I was figuring this out for literally a good two hours. But what I found is that if you go onto the 3D view, so normally on the keyboard, if you press Shift 9, and then you press the Q button on your keyboard, you'll see it will spin round. So we've now got, you obviously have to kind of line it up quite well. We've got the propeller there, and we've got the right hand wing there. Uh, the left hand wing there, sorry, and the right hand wing just there. So that's all it is. Uh, you just have to, you can move the view about. So if you press Q, you'll go to the left. If you press E, you'll go to the right. But if we press Q a little bit more, that's now in the center. Okay, um, so we can set these both up like this, and there you go. Uh, you have got other buttons as well, so like the arrow keys, you can go up and down as you can see. So I can go all the way up, and we can go right above, we can go down. And this is just like a free view camera essentially, that's, that's the way it's working. Um, so um, you can see we can go up and down, like so, uh, so I'll have it about there. Um, so you can just work with this, it works like a free view camera as I said. Um, but yeah, I hope uh, this video has helped. Um, I'll show you what it looks like when we start it up. So we've obviously got the mixture and the throttle quadrant on, we're gonna turn the switch panel on. We'll just turn the batteries on for now, just so we get the rotor running. And there we go, I haven't got any sound on this because the sound runs on these um, headsets here. Um, so we've got the rotor spinning there, uh, we can put the flaps down as well, you can see that you can see your flaps working, so if you are doing any kind of flight training in these, um, you can obviously make sure that the flaps are visually down, uh, we can see that happening on both sides there, and we can go up, uh, same with the ailerons, you can see they move up and down, we look to the other side, they move up and down as well. So I hope that has helped um, with uh, any of you who are wanting to configure your screens. Um, obviously different aircraft will have different configurations because of obviously where the wings are positioned. Um, so if you have any more questions or queries, don't hesitate to message me uh, on the Facebook page at SJ Sim Flights uh, or comment below uh, in this video. So have a good one guys and stay safe.